What I'm going to be doing is installing a USB 3.0 expansion card into my Dell Inspiron small desktop. When dealing with a small desktop, you want to check two things. You want to be sure that there is no obstructions near the slots so that as you insert your USB cord into the USB slot, that there's nothing on either side to prevent it from fully going in. And the other thing you want to be sure of is that whatever expansion card you buy, they'll probably come with a standard or full length bracket. Well, a full length bracket won't fit the small desktop. So the PCI card I bought includes both the standard bracket and a low profile bracket. And I'll give you a close up of the specific make and model of the card that I bought. Comes in a protective sleeve, so it prevents dirt and static electricity from getting to it. Comes with an instruction manual and a device driver. Looking at the back of the computer, you might be seeing there's plenty of ports on the back of the computer. Well, these are USB ports. There's four of them, but they're 2.0. What I need, I need 3.0 ports. Now, you can't see it, but off to my left is a piece of equipment that I've got grounded to the cold water pipes that I touch to discharge any static electricity. Plus what I'm going to be doing, I'll be wearing these anti-static gloves to prevent ruining this or the inside of my computer from static electricity. Now I want to read to you from the instruction manual on the installation. Optional. Connect a 15-pin SATA power connector from the computer's power supply to the SATA power connector on the card. This is only required if you're using the ports with bus-powered USB devices. In other words, your external device does not have its own power supply or if experiencing connectivity issue. Well, most of the things I'll be connecting do have their own power supply, but some aren't. So as part of the install, I'll also be installing the SATA power connector, and I'll show you a close-up so you can see the model numbers. And the 15-pin connector they are referring to is this one right there. These connectors are what go into the motherboard. This is for the SATA power cable. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have to swap out the bracket because as you can see, this bracket was made for a full desktop. And we need to switch it over to the bracket made for a low profile. All right, to do that, the bracket is just connected by two screws. So we just take a standard Phillips head screwdriver and remove them. And gently remove the bracket. And on the new one, make sure things line up. And then reinstall. Now before I tighten any of the screws, I'm going to make sure they're both in so things are aligned before I tighten them. And when I tighten them, it isn't going to be really tight. It's Right there, and right there. And now we're ready to open up the computer on this one. You remove that sheet metal screw, this one, use this handle to pull the side panel back and then out. These screws are the same length and size, so you don't have to worry about 
which screw goes into the top and which goes into the bottom. Next thing we're going to do is just remove this blank plate. I've already loosened it up from some previous work I did on the computer. Okay, we've got the side removed. We're going to remove this blank plate. It's not needed anymore. Now this computer has two PCI expansion slots. They have a full length one here and a very short one here. It's the short one that we'll be using for the installation of this USB expansion card. The power we need to tap into is this power cable. This power cable right here supplies power to two things, the internal hard drive and then the optical drive, which is on the other side of the hard drive. All right, there's the connector I'm tapping into. This one is for the hard drive. This one comes off back up into here and connects to the optical drive on the other side of this. We don't have to mess with this. We just need to tap into here. You can see at each end the connectors are different. This is really if you will, the female connectors, that will attach to the male connector. And this is the one that needs to connect into the existing adapter. Okay, if you look closely at this connector, you'll see that it's this opening on this side is wider than this one. There's a little narrow notch there. That needs to marry up with this side. See this is smooth. This one has raised. That raised part goes into here. Okay, there was a small click when I connected it. It's nice and snug in there. Now there's a variety of ways you can do this. We could take this connect it to the hard drive and then run it over here to the PCI card. This will be used, this will be used, it's going to give us two unused ones. Well one of these unused ones could be used for the second expansion card if I need to and this one will just remain unused. If you look carefully at the connector you can see where it has like an opening here that opening needs to line up with the little tab on the hard drive. And it's going to be easier for me to do if I take this machine and just turn it upside down. So I'm going to do that right now. For those of you who are curious, this machine actually has two drives. Drive C is a solid state drive. And it is actually that right there. It's mounted directly to the motherboard. The next drive is a typical hard disk drive. That's that right here. When you look at the connector, you see like there's a it ends in an L shape here and it has a little protrusion here. That needs to marry up with the connector in there. I want to show you a close up of this connector right now. So this end needs to go there. And now I want to turn the machine back around. So my adapter extension, say the power cable, it's not a data cable, it's a power cable, connected to the hard drive. I'm going to be using this one to connect it to the PCI card we're installing, and these two become extra. Now to install the bracket on my computer, if you, if you look right here, it says pull. That opens this up for the expansion card to be installed. All right, these are the connectors that go right there. These connectors go into here. And just like on the hard drive, it's configured in a very specific way. So 
So I take it so these will go into there. Now in this bracket it has like a little opening for a screw, but there's not anything on the other side for it to screw into. And it looks like you could screw something here, but that actually is not an opening, so a screw really can't go through in here. But this clamps the card into place. So it should be secure. We can move the cables out of the way. All right, the next step is to put the side panel back on. I want to put the side panel on. I'm holding it upside down at the moment. You can see these three clips. Remember the panel came out by sliding out and forward. Well, those clips line up with here, here, and here. Slides forward. Make sure it's closed all the way around. I don't tighten it all the way until all the screws are in. Again, I don't overly tighten it, just make it snug. And there's our four USB ports. All right, so the next thing to do is hook the computer back up, install the drivers, and make sure everything works. Since I disconnected power from the, from the hard drive, I need to make sure that the hard drive is still functioning. I want to make sure that the Optical drive is still working because the power was split from the hard drive to the optical drive. I want to make sure I didn't loosen up that connector to the optical drive. To install the drivers, take the DVD that came with the expansion card, put it into the optical drive of your computer. I'm using Windows 10, and if you put in your DVD and the installation program doesn't start automatically, just use File Explorer and navigate to your optical drive. Here are the files, but there's setup exe. I'm just going to right click it and click open. And it gives you your license agreement. You can go through and read it. As typical, it defaults to do not accept because they want to force you to say, yes, I accept the terms. And then you can click Next, click Install, and it's complete. All right, so everything is installed. It did not say that we have to reboot our computer, but that's something I like to do anyway. So I want to reboot it. We'll come back on. And then I want to go into Device Manager and just look at some things to make sure it looks okay. All right, so I rebooted the computer. What I want to do is go into Device Manager. I'm on Windows 10. I'm going to right click Start Device Manager. And I'm going to open up the USB controllers. Okay, if you remember, as it was installing the drivers, it was using these. So let's take a look at these. I'm just going to highlight it, right click Properties. Working properly, that's good. Driver, that's a little old. That's over eight years old. So let's see if there's something newer out there. Update driver, search automatically. All right, so for the root hub, it's telling me that the best drivers are already installed. That's good. Close this one, let's go to the host controller. Right click it, properties, driver. Again, that's over eight years old. Let's see if there's a newer one. All right, it found some newer drivers and it has installed them. We'll close it. All right, that's only a few months old. Now right, we're going to close it. And one thing I noticed is that there was another one. Thing was called root hub that is now gone but what i want to do is reboot the computer and just check things out and we'll be right back 
Okay, so I've rebooted the computer for the second time. Just going to do a quick look in Device Manager. Going to look at Properties. Device is working properly. It's the one we had updated via the internet, so that looks good. So at this point, I think we're done. So this concludes this video. I hope it's been useful to you, and thank you for watching.